Mario Kart is that one game that you can pull out during pretty much any occasion and everybody will have a good time on every single level and every single track, except for the last one in every single Mario Kart being Rainbow Road. Rainbow Road is infamous for being one of the most cleanest, fun, and most exciting tracks in the Mario Kart series, but it's also one other thing, one of the most difficult. Every Mario Kart to date has had some type of form of Rainbow Road, whether it's been a remake or a new recreation, there's always been a Rainbow Road, and today we are looking at the top 10 Rainbow Roads in Mario Kart, and at the end, picking our very best number 1 Rainbow Road in the series. Of course, like always, before we get started, go ahead and comment which one you think will win in the comments down below. And also, if you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe and please, please, please like the video if you enjoyed to help the video to grow and reach a bigger audience. I can't thank you guys enough for tuning in. And without further ado, let's get into the list of Rainbow Roads. We start off with number 10 being a game that you guys may not have heard of, Mario Kart GP, which is based only in arcades, as it's a kind of booth thing you sit in and you drive with a steering wheel. No, not Mario Kart Wii. But this game also has a Rainbow Road in its tracks, and its Rainbow Road isn't the hardest or the most difficult, but what it does have is a great scenery. In the background you can see kind of coliseum pillars and towers, and also I love the purple trees, and it just gives that sense of a beautiful area. I really liked what they did with the background, but like I said, we can't just put a track at the top just because it has a good background. The track itself is incredibly basic, and that's it for that one. Now to have a total of 10 Mario Kart Rainbow Road tracks, I added Super Mario Kart's Rainbow Road and Mario Kart 8's rendition of this track. But anyways, number 9 we have Super Mario Kart. And this track is also pretty basic, but it's iconic because there's lots of going back and forth and tight turns. If you fall off the track, you fall off the track. There's no guardrails or anything to protect you. Also at the end you have that final stretch which is really cool to race against your opponents or your friends or whoever you're playing with and with those thwomps at the end ready to smash you. It really gives that sense of urgency at the very last second when you go down just a straight away. But with all those cuts and turns and little jumps that you have to make it over pits, it can be pretty tricky. Number 8 we have the Mario Kart 64, Mario Kart 8 version of Rainbow Road. This one is very long. It's a very long drug out race with three different laps, but it's just that long. It's really not that difficult at all and it really all depends on what items the characters get. If it wasn't for the amazing background and the city down below, it really wouldn't be much. But the stars and the train going by and everything below with the fireworks and the mushroom city on the ground, it really is a very good atmospheric Rainbow Road. But besides that, it's a very basic track. There's even guardrails where it really doesn't even need them because the track is so wide. I mean, yeah, it's it, it's okay track. Okay, Mario Kart Super Circuit's Rainbow Road is absolutely insane. You just got characters bouncing off of guardrails because they all work as like a bounce pad and you can just skip the track halfway and just do all these kind of cheats and speed run tactics. It, it's crazy when you watch somebody competitive play, but man, this track could be really, really difficult if you don't know what you're doing. All you have to do is pretty much hit these guardrails which bounce you up high in the air where you can skip parts of the track. And it has a really cool background because Paper Mario 64 is referenced with Bowser's Castle in the sky. But I really like this track because it can really be all skill based, you know, you really don't even need many items if you're really good at handling your cart because you could just bounce off of guardrails and, you know, jump the person in front of you. But you really have to know this chorus in order to know what you're doing. It's probably one of the most tactical on this list, so I really do like this one. For number 6 we have Mario Kart 8's version of Super Mario Kart's Rainbow Road. This one's just a little bit better looking, it's cleaner, it has the HD graphics this time around, and the Thwomps do more than just slam on the ground. There's two of them and they kind of have the superstar effect and they can shake the track and wobble it a little bit, which is kind of fun and you can kind of time it down. This one has the ultimate straightaway at the end, which really makes it tactical for you to figure out what you need to do in order to beat your opponent. If you're going to bump them off the road, slow down to time up the Thwomp Slam, or whatever. It's pretty cool and they also add little ramps and speed boosts along the track, which makes it slightly better. For number 5 we have Mario Kart 8's Space Station Rainbow Road. This place is actually pretty cool. It takes the classic Rainbow Road and kind of mixes it with a futuristic approach with electronics, a space station, and all kind of satellites surrounding the track. 
you also get to fly towards the space station and go through a little conveyor belt section which is pretty cool and a completely different touch for Rainbow Roads. But they also ends the track with a split section which kind of reminds us of past Rainbow Road experiences. But overall, this track is really fun even though that one turn always chucks you off the track especially if you're playing 200cc. I mean you can't even break past it, you're going to literally have to get hit by a shell to continue on. But this track is a really good Rainbow Road track but it does sit right in the middle of our pack. With number 4 we have the Mario Kart DS Rainbow Road. This is where we start to see the complexity of the Rainbow Road tracks and the difficulty starts to rise. But this track really does take the Rainbow Road approach. There's all types of twists and bends and loops and it really does feel like a crazy rainbow ride in outer space. Now it doesn't take too many crazy risks like we'll see in the later installments of Rainbow Road but this one is definitely one to mention. Number 3 we have Mario Kart Double Dash. This track was one of my very first Rainbow Roads I've ever played and it was a doozy. This track is extremely long and tons of tricky and twisty turns. The first two turns are complete U-turns which makes it really difficult because there's no rail on the back side which means you can easily fly off into space <laughs> or the night sky. There's all types of cool scenery with Mario letters in the sky going in the glowing star pipes and all kind of cool stuff like that. You also feel like you're always going like 200cc on this track because the speed boost and the quick turns always keep your momentum going, which is an amazing thing. Towards the end of the level, you also get this cool star elevator type shaft that shoots you up all the way to the top, right back to the start. So it really does feel like a dynamic course where you're starting at a higher level and working your way down just to go right back up at the end again. Number two, we have Mario Kart Wii. Without a doubt, the trickiest course in my book. This course is incredibly fast and there's so many turns and tricks that you have to hit precisely so you don't fall. There's an immediate left turn in the beginning that can completely take you off the track but not only that, this game strides in tricks and flipping off of the sides of walls to get your momentum. And momentum is key here because you'll need those little boosts in order to get over chasms and other types of traps along the way. The thing with this Rainbow Road that's different than others is there's actually ways that you can turn the tide of battle yourself by hitting turns sharper and also by having specific items to make certain jumps. Mushrooms are key because they can get you over big pits in the middle and you can just pretty much blast past people without falling off the track of course, be careful with that. But the tricks and the flips that you can do to land from track to track feels great and the split tracks at the end with the final stretch making that hard left turn is an amazing feeling as you reach the goal. Now when I had to go back and pick which one was the best, obviously I want to pick which one had the most impact on me, which one was the most unique designed, and which one had the quote unquote Rainbow Road feel the most, and that one was Mario Kart 7. This Rainbow Road is unbelievably polished, it is the best feeling Rainbow Road by far. This Rainbow Road goes throughout the galaxy and it almost feels like a Mario Galaxy tie-in. There's little pieces of almost every single level in here with bouncing mushrooms and even all kinds of enemies on the track. This track wraps around the galaxy and around other planets and you'll even drive on the planets like the rings of what looks to be Saturn and you'll even go on a planet itself and dodge incoming boulders and chomps bouncing up and down. It feels amazing to fly on this course even as you're flying yourself with your paraglider but this track was so much fun to me because not only is it just a three lap but it is a three checkpoint style of racetrack which means you don't ever see anything twice. You fly through this one long stretch of racetrack which is a lot of fun. And when I go back to the flying part you actually fly through space which even looks like an asteroid belt. What makes this track so good is it has a little bit of everything. It does almost everything perfectly correct. It has a little piece of every single Rainbow Road we've seen so far and it just feels so right. I love this track so much and I really wish it was brought back on a home console so I can experience it even more in the HD graphics and visuals. But I cannot wait to see if this track ever comes back in the future and if it does you better be sure that I will cover it and talk about it even more because I love this thing.